Namaste, beloved. I'm Akasha and welcome back to my channel. So happy 2023. Today is Saturday, January the 14th. I hope you are all doing well and that this year is starting out beautifully for you. Um, it is for me. So ah, I'm just in the inspiration and in the recreating and manifesting and all of that good stuff. Um, I feel like, so we're in my office right now and I'm having some issues with the camera. Oh. Forgive the wobbling. We're just going to deal with it as it is. Um, we're also going to pretend that my eyebrows don't look like two big black caterpillars on my face. I got microbladed, uh, microblading done um, about a week or so ago. So they're just looking a little bit cry right now. So we're going to ignore that. Um, but that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to talk to you about my shaggy eyebrows. I'm here to talk to you about three beautiful, positive, intense, amazing ways to manifest um, in your life. And we are in still in the first month of the new year, and this is a great time if you have not um, set intentions for your year. It's not too late to do that. I don't believe in that. I think you set intentions whenever you want. There's still a lot of energy throughout the whole month of January. So if you have not figured out exactly what you want to manifest this year, this is a great time to um, spend a little bit of time thinking about it. And I want to share three ways that I have used to manifest, not just at the new year, but just in my life in general that I have found really potent and powerful. And I want to pass those on to you. So I hope you have something tasty to drink. I was firing up the tea kettle and you know what? I just was like, it has been raining nonstop in California. And I keep like saving up all of my errands until there's like a break in the rain. And today it just didn't happen. And I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna run errands in the rain. And by the time I got home, I was just busted and tired and like, you know what? I'm going to get this video out today because I'm feeling the spirit, but I'm going to do it with a, with a few sips of Pinot Grigio, or excuse me, Pinot Noir. So, um, cheers to you. Happy New Year's. If you do not drink, then you can pretend this is grape juice and I will go along with it. Mm. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about vision boards, scripting, and draw my life. So these are three methods that I have used to manifest incredible things in my life. Um, and I sing, sing the praises, um, sing the praises. So vision boards, if you're on this channel, I'm sure you have heard of, made, seen, participated in, there's no way you haven't heard of vision boards, but I just want to chat a little bit about them, break it down a little bit more, what is a vision board? So basically a vision board is some form of poster board, cork board in like a medium size, depending on what you wanna do and where you wanna hang it. And you create a collage using pictures that represent the things that you want to manifest in your life. So this can be like, I find with vision boards, I love to start them at the beginning of the year because it's just a great time. There's already this collective buy-in to um, building and manifesting and creating intentions and resolutions and all of this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of collective energy around it and you can harness that to create your vision board. I'm also extremely ritualistic as a witch, hello. So I do everything with ritual. So when I am working on my vision board, what I like to do is first meditate on what it is that I actually want in my life. And I try to get specific without cutting off, you know, the universe's opportunity to bring to me things that I could not have even imagined, right? So 
um, I'll take some time to really think about what make what brings me joy. What do I want to see evolve in my life? And I take a piece of paper and divide it into three sections. The first is professional, the second is personal, and then the third is spiritual. And don't get too intense on what fits in which category or how many things, just don't overwhelm yourself. I try to come up with at least three things in each category so that, you know, if you think about it, you can break down the year into um, four quarters, right? Or three groups of four months, depending on how you want to do that. I like to do it as three groups of four months <laughs> um, to make 12. So three to me is a nice round number. It's not too many things. Um, but if you have more than three, do it. If you have less than three, do it. Um, but I kind of like to have a minimum of three. So in the professional category, let's say I want to, um, I want to start uh, a business. I have a business idea that I really want to get off the ground. And I know that I want to, um, really send a lot of energy towards building that up this year, whatever it is. Let's say I'm starting a, well, for me, I do tarot reading. Okay. So let's say that was brand new and I wanted to start a tarot reading business. How would I do that? Um, do I need to take a class? Do I need to build a website? Do I need to um, start advertising? I don't know. Do I want to create my own deck, right? So more ideas will start to come to you as a part of this main thing that you want to manifest. So that's professional. Um, if your professional goal is about finances, that's wonderful, but don't make your whole goal I want to um, make $10,000 a month. Make your goal doing what? What am I doing to earn $10,000 a month? Because we always want to be thinking about what we are bringing to our community, how we are improving the world around us, how we are contributing to this beautiful big world that we are a part of, right? And then when you are contributing something, you're going to be blessed financially as a result of it. So yes, absolutely set financial goals, but think bigger than this is how much money I want. Go a little deeper. What do you wanna be doing that then creates that flow for you. So, professional. Personal, personal can be anything around, excuse me, your material life. So I, um, I want to spend a lot more time reading this year. That was one of mine because I found that since the pandemic, I spent a lot of time watching TV. Um, and I did not read as many books in 2021 as I wanted to. I didn't read as many books in 2022 as I wanted to. And so this year I said, okay, I need to get back to being far more well-read than I am right now. Um, I love books. I love stories. Um, I have one book that I have reading, have been reading for probably a year and a half. That is terrible for me. I'm not judging you. But when I get busy, reading is the last thing that I go to, but it needs to be the thing that I do a lot more because it, it's inspiring and it makes me think and it makes me get involved in the story, right? Um, so that was one of the goals that I set for myself, that I want to spend a lot more time reading um, versus watching TV. And the ideas that came to me was, okay, well, I downgraded from... Uh, a house to an apartment, I don't have as much space for a big old bookshelf, so I don't want to add any more books, but I'm going to get a, um, I'm going to get a library card for the area that I live in now, and I'm going to get, um, an Audible account, which I did. So now I can get one Audible, one audio book a month, um, but then I can also go to the public library and borrow things, which I love. There's this fun, like exciting feeling of going to the library and then going through the reference computer and finding the things you want. And then you leave with like eight books and you're like, yeah, there's something so awesome about that. And you didn't spend any money. So I love the library and I forget about it sometimes. And I'm like, oh wait, the library. And then I go back to the library. I'm like, oh yeah, I miss going to the library. 
So reading was one of my big goals um, in my personal life that I wanted to manifest. Um, just reading more, absorbing more, getting more focused on like, you know, I wanted to also just dive deeper into like podcasts that would be really healthy for me. Um, making self-care and um, mental well-being a big part of my year this year as well. Um, on top of other goals that I have for my physicality, you know, moving more, getting out and walking more, doing more um, hatha yoga. Um, so yeah, whatever comes to you in the category of personal, right? Lastly, you have your spiritual category. The spiritual category could be a wide array of things. For me, I tend to get like restless in my spiritual practice and I find that I'm going to the same exact ways of doing magic. And so, you know, one of the things I said was I want to dive deeper into another form of divination. I want to um, take another class. Um, one of the things I already did, um, I joined the Patreon of another creator, another content creator here um, who practices Ifa. Um, her name is um, the Queen Poe. She's fantastic. If you are into hoodoo and Ifa, I highly recommend her channel, The Queen Poe, P-O. Um, and so I joined her Patreon and as a part of, you know, being her patron, she does a lot of lives um, that are just for patrons and, um, you know, discussion forums and book club. And so I got two of my goals knocked off right there. Like, oh, well, I got to read more because now I'm joining this book club and um, just finding ways to open up your spirituality, open up your mind to let more methods of um, doing what you love to do. And for me, I know that a big part of my spiritual growth that I really want to exercise a little bit more is community, tapping into community, um, finding folks who have similar practices and beliefs to myself that I can connect with um, on an ongoing basis so that I don't feel like I'm just a sol solitary practitioner and everything I do is on my own, right? So community, while that's a personal goal, it's also a spiritual goal, especially if it is around your spirituality. So doing more divination with different types of divination, um, maybe you wanna pick up the bones or maybe you wanna learn runes or um, sharpen a psychic skill, whatever it is. Once you have your list of things in each category, and the reason why we make a list, let me back up. The reason why we make a list instead of just going hog wild uh, in a magazines and cutting out photos is because once you put down on paper, spell it out, what you see yourself achieving, what you see yourself accomplishing, it's a way to hold yourself accountable throughout the year. So I take that piece of paper and I, you know, put it someplace where I'm going to encounter it all the time because my vision board is going to be tacked up on the wall. So maybe that piece of paper could go on your fridge. Maybe that piece of paper could go in your wallet. Maybe that piece of paper could go on your altar, like under your working candle. Either way, you want both of these things to be someplace where you can see them. And the words just really make you focus on spelling out what it is that you want, being specific. Once you've done that, then the fun part is the crafting. So get your poster board. I think the board that I got is probably like, I, I tend to do like kind of medium sized things. So like um, 12 by 24, 24 by 36 just feels a little too big for me. But um, you know, look at a couple of them, see what you like. I've done poster and I've done cork. Um, this year I did a cork board. Um, and you'll go and find magazines. I went to Barnes and Noble because I wanted a wide array of magazines. So I got magazines that are like things about your home, things about, um, you know, music. I like music magazines, art magazines. Um, I think I got one called Bust, which is like 
really cool articles, stuff about, you know, certain like cool celebrities. I think like Christina Ricci is on the cover, which if you have not watched Wednesday on um, Netflix, it's a great series. I really enjoyed it. Um, Christina Ricci is in that. It's the story of Wednesday Adams. I'm getting off track. So get whatever you're drawn to. Can you tell it's evening? This is when my mind is really like, do 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 Square. So get what you really feel called to. Flip through, make sure you see some pictures that resonate with the things that you said you want to create. And then you'll cut them out and you'll create what looks like a big collage. Things will be overlapping. I'm not gonna show mine because that is super personal and that's, you know, as Tabitha, the vegan likes to say, that's my business. Um, but Google vision board and you'll see it. It's gonna look like a collage. And then I like to also cut out words that really exemplify what I said I'm doing. So like, you know, meditate, um, create, self-care, whatever it is. Cut out words too to stick on top of your pictures as well. Then once you're done and you have your collage, hang it up someplace where you're going to come into contact with it. Now, the alternative is... Um, there are folks who are doing digital vision boards where you just create something on Pinterest or on some other app, and then you can save it as your background screen or your lock screen on your phone. I like to do both um, because I'm an analog girl <laughs> I'm in a digital world. So I like to create a physical vision board that I can hang next to my altar. And then every day when I go to my altar, I have to see those things that I said I'm creating my life and it keeps them fresh in my mind. But then I also take a picture of it and use it as my um, um, my background screen on my phone so that as I'm scrolling and looking at other things, there's no getting away from, this is what I said I'm creating. I think it also helps you spend a lot less time obsessing over what other people are doing on IG or what other people are you know, pinning on their boards or whatever because you're gonna have to interact with your stuff before you get to anybody else's stuff, which I think is important when you got some major things in your life that you're trying to manifest. So once your vision board's up, I suggest a six month point. So you throw it up in January, go back in June, look at it and see what have I actualized? Where am I in this process? Am I making Am I taking strides towards what I said I was going to create? Are there some things that I've realized, actually, that isn't what I want. I changed my mind about that, especially if you put up things like jobs or like moving someplace or what have you. Um, you may change your mind later and realize that that's actually not what you want and you can edit it. You can edit your vision board. You can take things down. You can add things up. One of the things I love to do is when I see like, oh, I manifested that then I can put a date next to it and a little smiley face or check it off or put a sticker or something that shows like I made progress here. Um, I did that. And then each year when I do a fresh new one, um, sometimes there are things that I didn't finish, but I took steps towards and I'll leave it up there and I'll just keep adding to it. Um, I think that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You can have the same vision where I once had the same vision board for two years and I only swapped out like a couple of the things because I was seeing return on what I had started, but there were still a ways to go for me to feel like, okay, I manifested that. I can check that thing off, right? I was still taking steps. I was still doing things towards those particular goals. So that's vision boarding. Now, scripting. Scripting is our second method of manifestation. And scripting is very much like, um, kind of like the list part of the vision board ritual that I said. So you are gonna write down the things that you want, but you're gonna write it as a story. And you're gonna write it in either like present tense or past tense or a combination of both, right? So the idea is you are already doing this and you are grateful that you have achieved that, right? Does that make sense? So you never wanna be casting, you never wanna use language like I want, I will, 
um, I plan. You always want to use finite language that means you are. I am doing this. I have achieved this. Um, and you, again, you'll decide what things that you want to experience and then you'll write it out as a story. Um, I am so grateful that this year I have manifested my dream job um, with a fantastic company that pays me handsomely for the work that I do. I'm respected and I have plenty of work-life balance and I can give a lot of my time to my family and my work and I'm making more money than I ever had and I have far more creative inspiration to create the other things in my life that I want to experience. Um, and you can go and go and go and go and go, right? I find that with scripting, once you start, you're gonna keep, you're gonna keep going. You'll keep going and going and going and you'll have this beautiful long story of your year. And then when you're finished with that, again, I suggest posting up your story someplace you have to encounter it often. So whether that's folding it up and sticking it in your wallet so that every now and again you go, what's that? And you open it and go, oh yeah, <laughs> these things I'm manifesting. Or again, you could tack it up on your fridge. You could stick it in your journal with like a little bookmark. So you have to go back and read it once a month or something. Um, but you just, you want it to be somewhere that you encounter it often enough to keep it fresh in your mind. Um, scripting works really great if you are somebody who's affected positively by affirmations. If affirmations work really wait, really great for you, then you will love scripting um, because it is kind of like you're casting yourself into a future version of who you are where you've already achieved these things. Um, both of these methods require you to raise your vibration. Both of these methods require you to be activating the highest version of yourself on a daily basis so that you reach the point where those things, where the distance between what you are trying to manifest or what you want is um, very short, right? Where there's no space between what you've asked for and what your vibration currently is. And then that thing just like is magnetized to you and you'll never be able to predict the ways that it's gonna happen and you'll seem like you're going on lots of twists and turns throughout the year, but you will look back and go, oh my gosh, that happened. Um, and it's such a wonderful feeling. <laughs> so, scripting. Now, the third and my personal favorite method, let me tell you something, draw my life has created so many opportunities in my life that I could not have could not have predicted. Um, Draw My Life is kind of like the vision board and the scripting combined, but it requires you to actually draw. So you have to get in there and get physical and draw. And it doesn't matter if you're a good artist, it doesn't matter if you make yourself look like a stick figure, with some cute boots, that's what I be doing. It does not matter whether you're a good artist. It's all about um, the impression that you are forming that is being absorbed into your subconscious and you are seeing yourself in a future moment where you have exactly what you want. Let me tell you a quick little story. So the apartment that I live in right now um, I moved in June of 2021 and I had been hoping to move probably almost a year before that, not quite a year, maybe like six months before that. Um, but we were in the pandemic and it just wasn't the best time, but I knew that I wanted to move from my previous place into a new place, all fresh energy. I knew that I wanted to live in an apartment complex that was not um, an individual landlord, that was a, you know, a, a group, a company <laughs> owning the, the complex. I knew that I wanted a pool. I wanted um, big windows for my cats to be able to enjoy. I don't know if you can see behind me that there's a giant bay window in my living room. 
and that huge cat tree <laughs> fits there. I knew that I wanted lots of, um, you know, open concept space for me to design what I wanted. And I needed a bedroom big enough for a king size bed because I already had a king size bed, king size bed and I was not downgrading. And I knew that I wanted two bedrooms. Um, I also had a budget in mind of what I wanted to spend. So I took a piece of paper and I drew an apartment complex. Now I can't draw very well. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm good at drawing. There are a lot of art witches on here that I think are fantastic. Um, I just forgot Molly Roberts is fantastic. Um, but I am not good at drawing, but I can do enough that it looks like what it is that I'm trying to, trying to explain, <laughs> trying to express. And it only has to look right to you. I drew myself the way that I saw myself in that moment. I drew the vehicle that I had parked at my complex. I made up a name for the complex. I pointed where the pool was. I um, selected a, a number in there that was mine and I was on the second floor, which I am on right now. I drew my cats sitting in the window because I wanted to make sure it was a place that accepted cats. I put my budget, so like, this is what I pay for my apartment every month. Um, and I drew myself chatting with a neighbor when I came home, like, hey, so-and-so, because I wanted to be in this community vibe. Hey, welcome home. How was your day? It was fantastic. Oh, I see your kitties in the window. I drew a little conversation, right? And myself. And let me tell you something. Damn if I don't live in the apartment. Now it's not the same name, but that doesn't matter. What matters is you draw enough to really tell the universe what you're looking for and then the universe fills in the gaps, right? I live in a wonderful community. The people here are so friendly. They chit chat with each other. My neighbors and I, um, my next door neighbor, every now and again, we swap food. We're <laughs> like, they'll bring me, you know, bread. Um, they, they, they make like Afghani bread. And so they'll bring me Afghani bread and I'll bake them cookies and like, the pool is fantastic. It's like I forecasted exactly where I was going to live because I drew it and I put it up on the wall where I had to see it. And I looked at it every day and I said, I'm grateful for my apartment where my cats are accepted and a loving chill ass community with a pool that fits into my budget. Ashe. And I'm sitting in that apartment. So that is my favorite way of manifesting. I wanted to share that with you. Draw my life. You could draw anything that you want. You wanna publish a book? Draw yourself sitting at a table with stacks of books and you signing your name in book and people standing in line to get their book signed, right? You want to be um, on stage? Draw yourself on stage, singing, acting, dancing, whatever it is you wanna be doing. Think outside of the box, wild as you please, whatever you want. And also, you could do all of these things together. You could do all of these things together. I'm more so, I will admit, I more so use scripting for things that I'm trying to heal in my life. More so, I use scripting more for shadow work, but you can absolutely use it for manifesting as well. And I know people who do and have a wonderful experience with it. So I just wanted to share those three methods. Vision board, very popular. Scripting, very helpful. Draw my life, very fun. So I hope these tips were helpful to you. If you have not already created some sort of whatever it is tool that you wanna to use to help visualize what you are manifesting in 2023, get busy. It's only mid January. You can still get in on that fresh new energy and create, create, create. I hope this year um, is oodles of blessings for you. Namaste.